98 Rock in the All Request Morning Show. It's uh, about five minutes past eight with Seed Bass, Marla, and Marianne Dawn Wells from Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Listen aloha, to that. aloha. Listen to that applause. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, goodness. So crowd, how are you doing? Crowd. I'm just great. You guys look so cute. I got to tell the audience, they're sitting here in uh, little white sailor hats. Yep. Yep, you look adorable, both of you. Got our little Gilligan hats on. Little Gilligan hats, both of you. We're crazy. We're out of our minds. So I cooked something, okay, and I wanted to unveil it while you were here. Now, this was supposed to be out of the cookbook. Now, of course, you can get this uh, at any bookstore, but it's Marianne's Gilligan's Island cookbook. So it was supposed to be simple salmon, okay, but then, however, it became like a combination of something fishy and the skipper baked snapper <laughs> and the simple salmon and then some other stuff that Marla was Marla has kitchen. created her own, and okay, I'm very excited so now, to see how this is. I just want to see what the look on your face is because this looks nothing like what it's supposed to, so. Here you go. All right. Ah! Ah! Ooh. It looks pretty good. Actually, it looks very good. Let me see well, what you did. Well, it's kind of cold. It's like you had green peppers yet. and you had onions. No, no, no you had no, green, no, green onions. That's right. Onion, the four green onions, they made it in there. The, now, you thought you were making the salmon recipe, but right, you flipped that's the page over by snapper. accident. Snapper. made snapper. <laughs> yeah, so there are two snapper I think snapper you did a great job. And, uh, yeah. mm. It actually tastes okay when it was just done. Well, but, no, and cold fish is good. Good sandwich. Yeah. I'm going to sit here and eat some. Do you want some sea And bass? the sea bass, what did you contribute to this morning um Hash Breakfast. browns. Hash browns, yes. Packaged them, yeah. and put in the toaster. I Whip, can tell. Whip them in the what toaster. What would that recipe be like if it had sea bass in it instead of the no, snapper? No, they have that. Look right. at this. There is. That's right. <laughs> Ginger's well-cast sea bass. I saw there that in is, there. there. Cook them, cook them, mm. cook them. But you know, really, the, the cookbook is not all tropical. We're sitting here talking about fish all the time, but my mom is 82. My mother and I share the same birthday, and my mother helped me put the cookbook together. She has taught me to cook. She's a genius. I have three generations of phenomenal women cooks in my family, as was my dad. We went through a thousand recipes to get down to the 300 we put in here. 13 wow. coconut cream pie recipes. All right, how 13. do you say this word? The bull boss word. Base. Billionaire bully base. Okay, I was just wondering because that, that was just uh, mm -hmm. a big long word. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I am not a chef, so that was something totally <laughs> yeah. foreign, basically, <clears throat> to me. Mm -hmm. And if you make that, are you bound to swoon a billionaire? I think so. It goes without saying. Dr. Judy's a sex therapist. I know she is. I know she is. Cooking and having sex. Mm -hmm. And a good meal uh, is, is not a bad aphrodisiac, is it? It is the perfect aphrodisiac, really, to make the romantic evening. You should be cooking together, picking out the food yes. together. Yes. Yeah. And you know, when I do a lot of these book signings, I'm amazed how many men buy the book. And I'll say, are you, are you getting your girlfriend or your wife to cook for you? She, no, no, no. I'm the one that does the cooking in the family. Yeah! Where are these men? Hook me up, okay? Right, just come with me tonight. Numbers, I'm going to be at uh, I'm going to be at uh, B Dalton's at Tyrone Square tonight between five and seven. Come on and hang out with me, Marla. We'll find one of those cooks. We'll scam. So now you see that we've solved all of Marla's problems. She could cook. She's going to go to the Universal <laughs> Studios theme park to pick up a guy, find somebody with her her oxytocin cuddle chemicals. Then she's going to make him a great meal. No, 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 no. The guy's going to find me at the bookstore. Then we're going on the rides. He's going to cook me a great meal. <laughs> hey, I like then this. Then strip down to the tea back and entertain the rest of my friends all night. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I got it halfway right, though. So let me ask you something. When the weather, when the weather started getting rough... Do you think we've sort of lost this gentleman? Is this a girl class? <laughs> Coffee talk this morning or what? <laughs> great. He's always saying he wants a bunch of women in the studio. Now we've got a bunch of women in the studio. And he's tongue-tied. I just want to know if the surf was cranking when the weather started getting rough. <laughs> yes, it was. Was it? <laughs> yeah, it was. Typical man, you see, their fantasy is to have more than one woman. And then when they're faced with it, they really get overwhelmed and have a very hard time. They get tongue tied. Or a very soft well, time. Hopefully, anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to go there, right? Had to go there. <laughs> had to go there. take it there. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't know about any of that stuff on Gilligan's Island. We weren't even allowed to show our navel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or cleavage. Or, or kiss. We couldn't do any of that. You see. Yeah. I remember in here, in the book, there's like a, an autobiographical biography thing, you know, in there, too, about the belly button thing. And mm -hmm. second of all, there's only three chicks, and one of them's married. And how many guys were there? Four guys? Well, there was a professor... And the skipper, yeah, like two. The skipper, skipper three two. Three, the three millionaire. And his wife. And his okay. wife. Okay. And then so there's four guys and three women. And one of them's married. Two, two, two of which are married. So two of which are married. Well, the Howells, are, the Howells are married. I mean, there's right. two people married. The rest right. of us are all single. Uh -huh. So now how does that work all out? Ooh, nothing. We don't bring that up. We don't talk about that. <laughs> this was pre-Norman Lear. I always say if this was, if Gilligan's Island had been done after Norman Lear, we'd all be in the same hut. It'd be a big commune, and you sort of wouldn't know what was going on. Gilligan's commune. But we had a real, I mean, we really had the censors. Literally, oh, we could you. not show the navel. Literally, the kissing could be, if you notice, every time Ginger kissed Gilligan, he knocked himself out, or she was just teaching the professor how to do it, and, <laughs> and it was no, uh, no romance at all. Hmm. It, it's uh, censorship. It's wow. not a bad idea, actually. It's kind of refreshing in this day and age.
Well, if you have any questions for Don Wells, Marianne from Gilligan's Island, give us a call here at the radio station. We'll put you right through. But first, we need to take a look at traffic with Gilligan Wolfman or something. I don't know. I was going to... Seabass! Uh, we have that <laughs> one big problem westbound of the Gandhi where they... Oh. My song. <laughs> Tampa Bay's 98 Rock and the All Request Morning Show. Seabass and Marla. We have Dr. Judy with us. We have Don Wells, who, of course, played Marianne on Gilligan's Island. And uh, we were just talking about that commercial that's out. What is it, Budweiser? Budweiser. With, uh, who do you like better, Marianne or Ginger? Or Ginger. Marianne wins. And then they say, who do you like better, Marianne or Jeannie? And Jeannie wins. So, <laughs> but it's a, it's a, a, a remarkable experience that I'm having out uh, on this book tour. I've been all over the country, and you find it, it's really interesting. People come up to you, and they're like, you've been in their home for 30 years, and they feel like they, they know you really well, and you get all kinds of reactions. But this Marianne Ginger discussion has been going on for a long time, and it's now become much more uh, than just, do you like Tina Louise or Don Wells? It's not that issue at all. It's, do you like the sex symbol, or do you like the girl next door? Right. And it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> we're still talking about this. It became, Nike did an ad about a year ago in a, in a tennis magazine with a high-top uh, tennis shoe called Ginger and a high-top tennis shoe called Marianne. No mention of Gilligan's Island whatsoever. You obviously knew what that meant. And the black tennis shoe at the end said racy and aggressive, and the Marianne tennis shoe said swell and wonderful. And um, it's, it's an issue between, college girls will come up to me and they'll say, okay, first time I go out with a guy, I, I ask them, are you a Ginger kind of guy or are you a Marianne kind of guy? She said, tells me right away what they're after. <laughs> Home cooking or... A night on the town. Well, you know, I'll tell you, what, most guys who have been polled and uh, were asked if they prefer the sex symbol or the girl next door, the ones who chose the girl next door, apparently never lived near Marla. Hey, no, I that's think we should, let's, ta uh, let's take a poll today. <laughs> let's take a We can't see them, so it's okay. They can right. say whatever they want. In Hillsboro, 990, <laughs> Pinellas, 572. They both, of course, end with 0098. Or you can call us on that uh, cellular one, pound 98 line. We'll be there for you. Bob Marley's going to go grab some phones, and um, we'll come right back with that. Excellent. So right. it's, it's got to be cool. Gilligan's Island, that was always a fun time. It was a great show, and, of course, it's, it's still around after all these years. We are the well. longest running show in the history of syndication. We have never been oh, off the air since right. 1964. As a matter of fact, Bob Denver told us that. He said it was, yeah. it's never not been on the no. air somewhere. No, we are in 30 languages. I have never been any place in this world that I haven't been recognized. I got on an, an airplane coming out of Orlando a couple years ago. The whole plane started to sing the song. Oh, God. I was in the Solomon Islands. This is this is just blows my mind. I was in the Solomon Islands with an adventure group from Stevens College. I'm a Stevens graduate. And four or five of us went with a National Geographic photographer to islands that women had never visited, to pagan islands, to, to wonderful primitive little groups of people in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And we went by canoe, slept on the floor in grass mats, slept in huts. We arrived on the island of Sulafu. All of these war dances were presented to us. We had this big ceremony. When it was over, the chief took me into his hut, and the chief's wife went, oh, I know you. No running water, no electricity. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean, somebody knew a Gilligan's Island character. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's 30 years. What can you do? That is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think we've got Woody here on the line. Is this Woody? Woody. Hey, Mary Ann. I just wanted to say that, you know, I love you. But I'm not one of those home cooking kind of guys, so uh, I don't think it would ever work between us. Oh, God, you're right, and I'm just such a good cook. That's all I ever think about. <laughs> hey, I just heard your guys' uh, version of the Gilligan's Island deal, and I came up with one of my own. Oh, you did? Yeah, you guys want to hear it? Yeah, I guess. Go ahead. Let her rip. Hang on. Just sit right back in your lira till the tail of a morning show <laughs> that started in St. Petersburg where the Gulf Stream winds do blow. One DJ is a surfer boy, his partner a biker chick. <laughs> they hardly ever get along, but boy, they do the trick. Boy, they do the trick. The ratings went right through the roof. Their competition split. The boss man knew he had it made with a surefire hit. A surefire hit. Their waves just won't be the same. Each morning it starts off with sea bass. And Marla, too. <laughs> Old man's there with Al Keck. Yes! Well. Patrick and the gnarly man here on the All Request Morning Show. That's great. Hey, Isn't man. that great? That's wonderful. Wonderful. What do you may have too much free time on your hands, bud. <laughs> you know it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent.
Uh, is, is that available on CD? Yeah, well, you know, we're, we're just cutting the demos now, so we're doing the promotional <laughs> run. But, uh, hopefully we'll get enough funding to uh, go for the CDs. That was pretty good there, Woodster. That <laughs> was like good. That? Yeah, that was good. Very nice. That was good. We didn't even preview that in advance. We just put them right on the air because that's the kind of show we do. Yep. Guys, I love you. All right, Woody. Hang on, man. I'll tell you what. Let us get back with you a little bit later, okay? All right. All right. We're going to want to uh, have you to do that again. That was pretty cool. The Woodster. I liked it. That was great. All yeah. right, what do you say we take a look at traffic here with the Wolfman and see what's going on out there? Well, just... 0835. Oh, yeah. Don't miss it. Woo, 27 minutes past 8 at 98 Rocks All Request Morning Show. It's a Friday morning, and if you would like to meet Don Wells from Gilligan's Island, today she's going to be at Dolphins at the uh, Tyrone Square, right? Right. 5 to 7 tonight. 5 to 7, so you have the opportunity, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And Walden's tomorrow at uh, Clearwater Mall. That's right. From so 2 to 4. Can't make it today. You can make it tomorrow. And uh, we'll fill you in on that in just a couple of minutes. If you need more info, give us a call here at the radio station. Or if you'd like to talk to Marianne, by all means, give us a call here at 98 Rock. And while you do that, here's Bad Boy Billy Squire. Pure rock and roll for Tampa Bay. Oh, yes. Tampa Bay's 98 Rock. The All Request Morning Show. See Bass and Marla. And uh, Dr. Judy, come here, Dr. Judy. We kind of forgot about you for the last couple of minutes. Hi. And we have Don Wells here, of course. Now, listen. We got all kinds of things cooking. We're cooking. That's right. We're uh, fending off sharks in the water from Jaws. Make, let's make our little noise here. This is what happens after the shark eats the cooking. <laughs> it's got that wonderful, soft, happy noise. That little rumble in the tummy. <laughs> well, that's enough of Dr. Judy. We'll uh, wait. <laughs> I think we'll go right back to dawn. So what are, in the tummy. What are some of the uh, psychological implications of all these guys being stuck on an island, which is every guy's dream to be on a, stranded on an island with a couple of hot babes? So what do you think? Tell us about that. And what do you think was actually going on? The, the frustration level? Do you think it, it reached any well, particular... Well, was talking about how it was such a clean show, but there are all those undertones to it. There were all, each of the male types... Mm -hmm. You were talking about the female types in the commercials, but they're the male types, too. So how do you think that um, they figure out, Marian? Was well, it... I think the professor kind of was the sex symbol. I think as, you go, as I go around the country, I hear young girls say, oh, I had such a crush on the professor. I don't think you think Gil of Gilligan as a leading man in any way, shape, or form. Uh, <laughs> the skipper's more of a dad image, I think. Uh, well, I think Gilligan becomes the anti-hero sex symbol. You know, now we have a swing back towards... Guys who used to be called the nerds, who really are the nice guys, yeah, yeah, who are yeah. becoming the sex symbols. That's healthy. It's very I healthy. Like yeah. It's extremely healthy. It's very important because lots of women used to go for the rich guys, the ones who drive the fancy car, the Harleys. Well, now it's Marla being the on the Harley, right? So what the are they into now? Exactly. Tell me. Help the me nice out. guy is definitely coming back. And I think maybe that's why Gilligan's Island has been so popular for so long because of that kind of nice guy image, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. honest guy image. No, no girlfriends and wives and stuff, and then, you know, other chicks on the side, you know, none of that. Who's the nicest guy you ever met, Marla? Tell me. Go ahead. <clears throat> nicest guy I ever met? Uh, my dad. Yeah, oh. but after him. You know what I know? Something? Me. She won't admit it. That is such a great prediction for your life, that you could say that your father was a, was a really good guy. Honest honest to the bone to the point where he annoys you you know oh. it's like so now that's where the complex comes from i think can't find another one like him so right, exactly. yeah I'm, I'm, me too me too i had a dad, dad that was terrific and that's hard to equal but is that part of it i see this very huge diamond rock there on your hand well, so you, know, you obviously didn't herself. have that you hard a time well you know this is this is the right hand though you've seen this no i was married once for eight years but mm -hmm. um we're but still good the, friends. That's healthy, too. But she I, bought but the Mary. ring for herself, though, you know. <laughs> I was happily These married. These 90s women, you know. <laughs> I was happily married for eight years, too. I was happy for one. She was happy for seven. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in the institution. I think it's hard to find the right uh, blend. And don't you think it's difficult today with everybody following their own paths? It's hard to have that road come together. Right. I, I think the idea is really not to look for the perfect person or the person who has everything because that's impossible. Of course you it just, is. You have to fill your life. with. It's like putting the round peg in the square hole. There are always little corners left over that you have to fill up. And no one person should be everything to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you can't expect one person to be everything to you. I mean, they, that's an awful lot to ask of somebody. See this now? We've swung from the kitchen to the bedroom here. Woo! And yeah. Marianne knows a lot about that. <laughs> Let's go back to the kitchen here for a second. Marianne's Actually, Gilligan's Island Cookbook is, uh, is available now at all bookstores. And if you'd like to meet Marianne yourself, you can do it today and tomorrow. Today she's going to be at Dalton's Bookstore on Tyrone. Uh, actually, it's at the Tyrone Square Mall on 66 and Tyrone Boulevard. According to Marla, everyone on planet Earth knows where that is. No, everyone who shops knows where, knows that, where is. that is. That's right. I'm yeah. there from 5 to 7. Let's ask Marianne, what is the most, what would be the most 
romantic supper that you could prepare from your cookbook? Oh, Which one good. would you pick if well, it was yeah, going to get, be a seductive evening? Give me, give me a minute and let me look through um, because I have a lot of menus and 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 I am a I, I'm a believer in candlelight dinners and and uh, kind of dressing for dinner and, and all of that. I like to do that. I think that's part of the but, meal. You I know, think I think that there there's there's really an issue here about what kind of a, a personality the guy would be um, for his food tastes. You know, it's the same thing like since. You know, I've been at the park. It's like there's an E.T. guy and there's a Back to the Future guy. There's got to be a spicy food guy and there's got to be one who likes these very kind Meat of... Meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Right. Yeah. So, you so know, which is my this kind is of your guy? food type. <clears throat> I like hot peppers <laughs> and Swiss type. cheese and pistachio nuts. Oh, I think. Oh, God. No, really. I make like little sandwiches with them. Ew. Wrap the pepper. I what swear. What was a Swiss cheese, pistachio nuts, and what? And hot peppers, jalapenos. Oh, you well, see? Well, that's kind of an interesting try. I love hot spicy food, too. Oh, they're great. Yeah. I think, uh, but I would say like a real wonderful Italian pasta and a wonderful salad and a wonderful wine would be my... Nah, see, you I grab a six-pack, a couple of hot peppers. <laughs> see that? But you could tell from... Yeah, sausages and beer. You could no. tell from both your preferences that you're both very hot-blooded people. Because you like those kinds of those foods that stimulate also, yes, yes. and you are. I mean, look at how easily you articulate. I'm very impressed with that. I'm not the looking for stuff. The words just come right out of your mouth, and yours too, and Marla's also. This is a room full I didn't of say, hot, uh, spicy people. Stalks of celery or carrots? Did we? We didn't talk about that at all. That didn't appeal to me at all. Somehow that went right over my head. All that tofu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, that vegetable state kind of thing. Wolfman. Oh, thanks a lot, Stephen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. We're eating and we're uh, squeezing jaw sharks and we're talking we're about... A good morning here. And that's not even Marla talking. That's Dr. Judy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have Dawn Wells, Marianne from Gilligan's Island. And Marianne, you were just talking about New York. Do you live in New York? No, no, no. But I've been, uh, I've been out on this book tour since the beginning of time, I think. I'm in New York four or five times a year. I love that city. Me too. Yeah. I love New York. There's such a pulse or such a pace or something. Nowhere else on earth do you have that. It has a character all by itself or uh, all unto itself or whatever. What am I trying to say, Dr. Judy? Uh, help well, me, help the, me. The, the one problem you got to put in perspective is that... Well, you live there. I do, and I live right around the corner from Trump Tower, and I have to say that my mood changes when I get back to New York. I love it. I would never live anywhere else because of the pace, but... You start getting abrasive yeah. and aggressive Defensive when you get to New, to New York. Yeah. I go anywhere else. I get here, get into a car. People start talking. You talk to the cab driver. You're nice to everybody. You get back into New York. Somebody talks to you. Uh, I'm thinking, what are, you're intruding on my space. Well, <laughs> what are you up, looking at? <laughs> um, you know, That's right. It's really, That's right. it's so environment driven. It's terrible. Yeah. So much nicer elsewhere. Well, it's a nice place to visit. I don't know if I could live there, but I love visiting New York. It's my favorite place to visit. It is San Francisco, too. I like San Francisco. Well, there's a lot of restaurants in, in New York, and oh, yeah. the, the variety food. of food is just endless. Yeah, it is. And, and actually, Los Angeles has kind of tried. I live in Los Angeles, and it's really an awful place to be right now. But there's so much happening there. But Los Angeles has now, I think, finally become where it's happening first. It used to be New York City. Mm -hmm. you know, and the even in terms the, of trend, like, like what? Well, I, I don't know. Whatever sort of is new... L.A. tries it first. I can't... I can't, I can't Fires, uh, riots, well, I'll you know. tell you, yeah, right, there well, is a trend. I just got back from Japan. Um, I was on a uh, book tour in Tokyo. And there is a trend that has not come here to America that is very popular in, in Japan, and that is used schoolgirl uniforms. What used schoolgirl uniforms. Are they used them for? Men or yes. For adult men? Mm-hmm. Oh, we could my. get a little import-export business going here, guys. It, <laughs> now, you know, now I was just saying the other day, we're now exporting uh, lingerie over to Japan, so maybe we can balance out this car thing that we've got going on. That's right. You know, so we'll just send them a lot of underwear. They send us some cars. We exchange parts. It's very hip happening. We have to make them a little smaller, but other than that, it's cool, you know. And speaking of cars, before it gets any later, we need to find out what's happening in traffic. One final time here with the Wolfman. Thank you, Seabass. Uh, still... Rock. Yeah, you are. Thank you, Big Al. It's exactly 9 o'clock at WXTB, Clearwater, Tampa, St. What Petersburg. The All Request Morning Show. We are having a big party, and uh, Don Wells is with us. And I, I know you got to get going here, Don. Yeah, I've, I've been whipping up a coconut cream pie for you, and, and it's not quite ready. So I, I'm going to have to bow out of here and check the oven in a minute. And you got to meet Don. <laughs> Don't miss this opportunity. She she's in town. She's really special. Yeah, she's in town for a I couple of the days. Best time. I've had the best time. Dr. Um, Judy, I'm going to get your home phone number. i got a few questions to ask you when I get home. Okay. <laughs> that I don't want the audience to know about. Marlon Seabass, I would take you on the island with me. You'll make my life much better, I'm sure.
Well, you, you made our great. show better. Yes. We had a great time with you today, Fabulous Don. Fabulous It was fun, and, and, and uh, I, I admire what you do, both of you. You're terrific. We're going to stop by today. We'll see you at Dalton's Bookstore on Tyrone at the uh, Tyrone Square Mall between 5 and 7. And then tomorrow at the Clearwater Mall, Dawn will be there at the Walden Bookstore between 2 and 4, which is right at the street where I live. So I'll definitely come by. And, and, and let me just say again that if you can't get by tonight, you can call in a charge card and you can have the book ordered and, and I'll sign it for you specifically. 5 to 7 is a little tough time. People come home from work, you know. It'd be Mar great to stop by. Mary Ann's Gilligan's Island Cookbook. With and the it's not all recipes, is it? I mean, there's a lot no. of, If you're not a cook, there's a lot of uh, wonderful pictures and a lot of fun stories and anecdotes and synopsis of the show and stuff, too. So It is a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, we have a couple copies to give out some autographed copies to give out this morning so if you behave yourself and you pay attention we might even give you one okay so thanks pay so much for having me you guys don the pleasure was ours definitely. Bye. 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 Yay. i'll never watch gilligan's Bye. island the same again i'll even tell you shark is <laughs> all right no, thanks a lot don oh, some diamond david lee on 98 rock